Greetings and welcome back. Today we have a very interesting limit problem from the 2020 MIT Integration B. And because it was an Integration B, obviously the limit is going to be that of an integration problem. And the integral itself looks fairly innocent, to be honest. I mean, look at it. It's just the integral over the region of n space 0, 1 to the n, okay, of x1 plus x1 x2 squared plus x1 x2 squared x3 cubed plus all the way up to x1 x2 squared all the way up to xn to the n dxn, where dxn is, of course, the differential element, dx1, dx2, all the way to dxn. Okay, maybe it's not as innocent as I was trying to make it out to be. But anyway, there is a very nice way to approach this problem. In the statement of the problem, there was this sort of hint. Maybe it was a hint, or maybe it was just an explanation of what this entire structure meant when... They said for the case of n being equal to 2, that is, if I call this monstrosity here i sub n, then that means we're basically interested in the limit of i sub n as n tends to infinity. So as per the statement, i sub 2 would be the double integral from 0 to 1 of x1 plus x1 x2 squared dx1 dx2. And from here we can work our way up because we could notice a pattern if we evaluate i sub 2 and maybe even i sub 3. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're not evaluating this problem as part of some competition. So we don't exactly have a four minute time, a four minute time frame in which we have to solve it. So we might as well take our time and have our fun along the way. So we're trying to evaluate i sub 2 here. So the first thing we notice is that we can factor out x sub 1 from the integrand. So we have integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1, x sub 1, 1 plus x2 squared, dx1, dx2. And now the integrand consists of a function of x1 times a function of x2, in which we can just separate the integrals. We have integral 0 to 1 of x1, dx1 times integral 0 to 1, 1 plus x2 squared, dx2. And both these integrals are quite easy to evaluate. First, we have x1 squared by 2, with the limits being 0 and 1. And then we have x2 plus x2 cubed by 3. Again, limits are 0 and 1. And the limit as the x's approach 0, we just get zeros. So we're left with 1 half times 1 plus 1 third. And we'll expand this a bit. We'll expand this as 1 half plus 1 by 2 times 3, which I don't know because as I've gotten better at advanced calculus, I've forgotten basic arithmetic. So that's i sub 2. But maybe forgetting basic arithmetic is for the better because maybe that pattern comes in handy for i sub 3. So with i sub 3, that would be integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1, of x1 plus x1 x2 squared plus x1 x2 squared x3 cubed dx1 dx2 dx3. And again, we see we, we can factor out the x1. So that means, again, we could separate the integrals, only in this case we have an integral from 0 to 1 of x1 dx1 times the double integral from 0 to 1 of what exactly are we left with? We're left with 1 plus x2 squared plus x2 squared x3 cubed dx2 dx3. So again, the integral outside gives us 1 half. And now we might as well invoke linearity. So we have double integral from 0 to 1 of 1 dx2 dx3 plus the integral, the double integral that is from 0 to 1 of x2 squared plus x2 squared x3 cubed dx2, I'm going to need just a little bit more writing space, dx2 dx3. Okay, cool. So the first term here is 1, obviously. And then from the double integral, we can factor out x2 squared. So we have integral 0 to 1 x2 squared dx2 times integral 0 to 1 
1 plus x3 cubed dx3, where again we made use of the fact that we have a function of one variable times a function of the other variable with respect to which we're integrating. So evaluating the integrals gives us one half plus, again over here we would have one third times over here we have one plus a quarter. And again the zero limits just vanish anyway. So that means we have one half plus one by two times three times one plus a quarter which means we have 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 times 3 plus 1 by 2 times 3 times 4, which is an even harder calculation than the previous one. And now we can infer a pattern. So the pattern is pretty much screaming at us in the face because all we have to do is, even for higher dimensions, we just have to keep peeling away one variable and then integrating. So for the case of i sub n, we have one half, which is one by two times one, plus one by three times two times one, plus all the way up to one by, let me see, this should be n plus one, all the way to one. Okay, cool, this is in fact quite nice. And now we can introduce factorials, because that means we just have the sum over k from two to, n plus 1 of 1 by k factorial and we're interested in the limiting case as n goes to infinity. So that gives us the limit of i sub n as n goes to infinity equal to the sum over k from 2 to infinity of 1 by k factorial which is quite familiar indeed. Recall that for the exponential function e to the z we expand it as the sum over the non-negative integers k, so we have the sum from k equals 0 to infinity, of z to the k divided by k factorial. So for z equal to 1, we have e equal to the sum over k of 1 by k factorial, but we need the sum to start at k equal to 2, not k equal to 0. So we'll just peel away the terms 1 and 2. So we have the sum over k from 2 to infinity of 1 by k factorial minus 1 by 0 factorial. No, wait, it's plus 1 by 0 factorial. We're just expanding the sum. Plus 1 over 1 factorial, which is, of course, 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1, which is 2, which implies that the sum over k from 2 to infinity of 1 by k factorial equals e minus 2, which is pretty cool because that means our integration problem is solved. The limit of that absolute beast of an integral, whatever it, whatever it was, as n goes to infinity, equals e minus 2. How is it that it's always, look, it's always the numbers pi, it's going to be e, somehow log 2 is going to be in there as well. And if we get the euler mascheroni constant, it's normally some kind of bonus. But over here, we just have the number e and the number 2, which is kind of cool indeed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time. Oh, I forgot. Drop me a follow on Instagram. I also post write-ups over there. And you can support all this effort on Patreon too. Thank you. See you next time.